My Social Security payroll contribution will go up, as will Donald's, assuming he can't figure out how to get out of it. Uh, but what we want to do is to replenish the Such Social Security trust. Such a nasty trust. woman. Donald Trump's nasty woman coming at the third presidential debate. It was just the latest in a string of anti-woman remarks that are not going to help with his gender gap in the polls. And Hillary Clinton mocked Trump's rhetoric at the Al Smith dinner on Thursday. People look at the Statue of Liberty and they see a proud symbol of our history as a nation of immigrants, a beacon of hope for people around the world. Donald looks at the Statue of Liberty and sees a four. Maybe a five if she loses the torch and tablet and changes her hair. Joining me now is Stephanie Shriak, president of Emily's List. She was a guest of Clinton's at the last debate. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Reverend, for having me. First, Nasty Woman has become a feminist rallying cry. I, I've, I've seen it on T-shirts and the like. Did that backfire on Trump? Well, it's not surprising that another thing that Donald Trump has said about women uh, has backfired. You know, I was there that in the debate, and I have to say, I've heard a lot of crazy things from Donald Trump this year. Uh, he's, uh, he's offended so many people in this country. But there was something when he, he called her a nasty lady that even in my gut, I could feel it. And it's because I think so many of us, so many of us around the, the country have been in rooms with you know, some unqualified man who wants to belittle us. And it was that moment that I think it didn't matter what age you were, uh, that women across the country who were already angry with Donald Trump and his behavior and how he talks about women said, that's it. I'm going to do everything to make sure that Hillary Clinton, who stood there with grace and with grit, we're going to make sure she wins. And that's what's happened. There's just been an extreme excitement, explosion of women all across the country. How is your group using Trump's uh, rhetoric and, and, and statements to mobilize uh, women voters this year? Well, you know, we knew as soon as he got into this race uh, 18 months ago and, of course, you know, started off right from the beginning calling Mexicans rapist. We knew that this was going to be an extremely unusual, if I could be kind about it, election. But Donald Trump's words and his actions and his bragging about sexual assault has been something that we wanted, wanted to make sure from, you know, particularly over the summer, that every woman and, frankly, every man in this country knows. And so at Emily's List, uh, we have communicated with women of all ages, particularly millennial women about how he talks about women, because then he has policies that back up this, this hatred. Uh, and it's really, it's really been energizing women. We, in fact, started just uh, a few months ago a, a program called Women Can Stop Trump. And, and of course, after the debate this week, we, did, we figured we better join the choir that we are seeing on social media. And we put out a logo that says, Nasty Women Can Stop Trump. You know, it's <laughs> Time for us to stand up and say enough's enough. Now, uh, now, 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 the, the stakes are too high. But, but Stephanie, you're the the sexism against women is not new. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he, here's a clip. Let me show you this. Here's a clip from uh, a John McCain town hall back in 2007. Watch the reaction to the question about Clinton. How do we beat the? Ah. <laughs> The uh, translation. <laughs> the way that. John, I thought you were talking about my ex-wife. <laughs> but that's an excellent question. So, so there's a lot of anti-woman uh, fervor down through the years. But have you ever expected it would get like this? And in this election, with uh, some of the things that has come from the top of the ticket. And at a time, you have five new uh, women Senate candidates this year uh, that are running uh, for the U.S. Senate. 
Well, you've been, you have been uh, leading the movement for progressive change in civil rights in this country for a long time. You, you know it takes generations generations uh, to move forward, be to put racism and sexism behind us, and we have a long, long way to go. This is one step. It is one really big step to elect the first woman president. And in fact, Re Reverend, we may actually have six, maybe seven brand new women going to the United States Senate. We've got all these wonderful women stepping up to run for the House of Representatives. Congress could look very, very different next year as long as our, our sisters uh, stand together and vote this year. But as you know better than anybody, Reverend, it's one step in the process. It is a big one and an important one, but we have to continue moving forward even after November 8th. Stephanie Shriok, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Reverend. Coming up.